Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about when the true date of Pentecost will be in the year 2023. Now, we're looking here at the calendar for our second sacred month in the year 2023. This is from our calendar that you can download. Just look for the links below. But you see in here that Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, will occur on June the 2nd in the year 2023. That would be the 13th day of Sivan. So for most of us, we'll put that date on our calendar, but there are others watching this video that's going to question this date of June the 2nd. So let's go ahead and look at scripture and some other information to prove this June the 2nd date. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Now, of course, the first place we want to look is in Leviticus 23, which is where we learn about first fruits and the Feast of Pentecost. Down here, starting in about verse 9, talking about first fruits, this is where the church was supposed to bring a sheaf of their offering, a small portion of their offering for the priest to wave it. Well, you see that it occurs the day after the Sabbath day. Now, if we scroll up, we can see the feast of Passover and unleavened bread ends in there in verse eight. And then you start talking about first fruits and Pentecost down here in verse nine. Well, that proves that the holy days don't overlap one another. We're looking here at the calendar for the spring, which shows the feast of unleavened bread here highlighted in the red. Well, when you follow Leviticus 23 very closely, you see that it's saying that the day after the Sabbath day, which was April the 13th, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread had ended, did the Feast of First Fruits take place. Now, there's a lot of people, especially the Jewish community, that wants to put First Fruits back on 16 Nisan or the 16th of Nisan. The problem with that is that it actually puts two holy days on the same day. You have the Feast of Unleavened Bread and they will be celebrating first fruits on that same day. The thing about it, those feast days are contradictory. Uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we are supposed to eat unleavened bread. You see there in verse six, it says you must eat unleavened bread. And then down here in verse 14, in relationship to first fruits and Pentecost, it says you must not eat bread. So if you celebrated first fruits on Nisan 16, you actually doubled up and you got one of them wrong because either you was eating bread or you was not. So one of those feast days you got in error if you follow that method. But if you follow Leviticus 23, they're on two separate days after unleavened bread is completely over. Do you have the feast of first fruits, which makes sense in relationship to our Messiah in relation to his resurrection? Because like we see there in John chapter 20, he was fully resurrected after the eight days were completely over. That's when he went to old Dalton Thomas and told him to put his finger in his wound. Of course, that was the eighth day. That was the Feast of First Fruits on Nisan 23, the eighth day after the crucifixion. Now, for further proof of the correct date of Pentecost, we want to come to the book of Jubilees, looking in chapter 4, 4, where we learn about Israel. We've covered this in many videos, so I'll spare you all of the reading this time. But just notice here in verse 1 how Israel made a sacrifice at the well of the oath on the seventh day of the month. Then you see there in verse 3 that he waited additional seven days after the sacrifice, hoping that he can get a word from our father. Well, those seven added days takes him to the 14th of Sivan. And you see, it was then that he celebrated the harvest festival of the first fruits or the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Pentecost there in verse four. And then on the 16th, the Lord appeared to him. And this is confirmed back in chapter 15 when it's talking about Abraham 
and how Abraham celebrated the Feast of Weeks in the middle of the month. Well, that all corresponds to June the 2nd in the year 2023. And as an aside note, this is one way you can be sure that your calendar is correct. And that is if all of this lines up right. It tells us specifically how to calculate the Feast of Pentecost. You see down in Leviticus 23, chapter verse 15, where it says you must count all seven weeks starting with the day after the Sabbath. And then in 16, it says you will count all 50 days until the day after the seventh Sabbath. So if you start counting off these Sabbaths, of course, we started after the Sabbath day of April the 13th. So April the 20th will be the first Sabbath out of seven. So if we count these, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And June the first will be the seventh Sabbath. And then the day after that Sabbath will be the Pentecost on June the second. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that Pentecost is on May the 28th in the year 2023 especially those who asked to Google or looked at their man-made Gregorian calendar, it tells you that Pentecost falls on Sunday. But what's interesting about that is if you look in 2022, it's also on a Sunday, June the 5th, 2021, it was on a Sunday, 2020, it was on a Sunday. The reason why is because they're not determining Pentecost based on Leviticus 23. But if you look here and you ask how Pentecost is determined in Google, it'll clearly tell you that their date of Pentecost is based on Easter, not on the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Sabbath days or first fruits or anything like that. They're starting their 50 days from Easter. And that's why every one of their Pentecost celebrations fall on a Sunday is simply 50 days after Easter Sunday. So now if you're wondering why this is so important, why we have to go through this every year, why we just don't celebrate with those celebrating Easter it's because of the so-called acceptable year of the Lord. This is what our Messiah came to teach us was how to live according to our father's will. And we learn back there in Luke, just like we learn in teaching two of the book of true life verse 53 that he receives our compliance for one year so in other words we have to live according to his will for one year and then we can start to receive the blessings that are promised to us the divine appointments make up what's known as the statutes and we have to keep these statutes throughout the year I mean, we can almost think of it as an initiation process where we have to follow along doing what we're told in order to get at our father's good graces. You have to remember that Exodus 23 is part of the covenant. Those four chapters that make up the book of the covenant, chapter 20, 21, 22, and chapter 23 is a mandatory contract that we're all under. You can see in 24 verse 7, that we all agreed to this contract and we're now being held accountable. That's why so many people are going through so much stuff It's because they are not living up to their end of the bargain. And all of those Leviticus chapter 26 curses are coming up on us. So this is why there's so much interference with the Pentecost dates and the rest of the dates. Like we learned in Daniel chapter seven, that the Antichrist would change the times and the laws. Well, you think about it, instead of communing with Passover, they have people going on Easter egg hunts on Easter. And even those who are able to resist the pagan holidays and keep Passover and unleavened bread instead, many will be tricked up come Pentecost because they're given the wrong date. And therefore, they are not in compliance with the acceptable year of the Lord because they missed a mandatory feast day. They missed Pentecost. Therefore, they have broken the covenant and have severed that connection between our father and our conscience. Like I said, this is why there's so much interference. This is why they took the time to change the times and the laws. 
because changing the rules of Passover or the dates of Pentecost will turn you back into a Gentile, making you dependent on the government systems for your food, clothing, and shelter. And then on top of that, when it comes to Tabernacles, the other mandatory festival, they actually changed it into the pagan holiday of Thanksgiving. We did several videos on this as we found in history where the Congress, even on the date of Tabernacles, instituted and made Thanksgiving a law. In other words, Thanksgiving is the government's response to our Feast of Tabernacles. Again, pointing to the amount of effort put into making us miss these feast days. And Pentecost is no different. They basically have us celebrated it early on the wrong date. But anyway, you're looking back at Daniel and you see right here that they're only allowed to do so for a period of time. Talking about this uh, Antichrist, they're only given a short period of time to actually do this. Well, we know that they're talking about the Catholic Church who was founded by a guy named Constantine back in 312. Well, if you understand that a time, like we learn in Daniel, is 490 years, seven times 70 years, well, if we take three and a half of those and add it to 312, we see that this reign, this changing of the time and laws, will last somewhere around 2027. I'm not going to dare set a date because you also have this so-called Edict of Milan, which was in February of 313. Well, that could mean that this reign of disobedience would end in 2028. Babylon could fall in the year 2028. And if you know your biblical history, 28, that was the year of the Messiah's first coming. That was the year that he was baptized and came out of the water talking about the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the year 28 AD. And if we add 2000 years to that, of course, we get 2028, which could very well be the year that Babylon falls. But we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to check out some of our other videos. If you have any questions or anything, put them down below. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. Salawama.